One thing I want you to put into perspective, one minute, one day, your life is just great. It's, it's, it's almost perfect. And you wake up one morning and find out that you've got cancer or your child has cancer or your grandchild has cancer. Now just imagine how your priorities would change overnight and how your priority would come, oh, I want that dress to I want to live to my next birthday or I want to live to see the next sunset. Now just imagine how that would feel. And don't wait for this to happen. Don't wait for yourself to be put in this position. Let's make a difference now while we still can and while we still can make a difference. My name is Michael Caccioni, and on July of 1994, I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease, which is a form of cancer. I then overwent six months of chemotherapy and was believed to be cured and doing great, but unfortunately I relapsed afterwards and had to go through heavy chemotherapy, a bone marrow transplant, and 12 radiation treatments. I'd like to welcome Dominic and Gloria Cuccioni. They don't need an introduction by me. Everyone knows them, Order of BC recipients. And here they are today talking about their passion running the foundation that their son, Michael Cuccioni Jr., founded when he was a youngster. I think he was nine years old, correct? When he so, gets, yeah. I'm gonna pass it on to Dominic and Cooper. Dominic and Gloria to tell us a little bit about Michael. Well, one thing, Mario, you're right on that uh, a lot of people don't realize that it was actually Michael who started his own foundation. Now, I'm here with such happiness to know that I'm going the Michael Cuccioni Foundation is going to be helping children who are in my shoes, um, and I'm, I'm I've almost got tears to my eyes. Uh, the thought that hopefully someday we are getting there, we are gonna get a, a cure that is is not gonna be as painful as the disease itself. You know, um, when he was diagnosed at nine and a half, he um, was in the hospital and he came to his mom and, and, and myself going, I gotta help these kids. Kids shouldn't be having this cancer. Knowing that these children had to go through the battle of their lives, knowing that some of these children would not make it and some would. But to me, that's what continues to inspire me. Seeing the children who pass away, the children who have to suffer, the children who make it. All of these children continue to inspire me to want to make a difference. And I'm never going to stop. Mark my words, never going to stop. We are going to see this here. In the meantime, he was battling his own. Yeah. And um, yeah, he had a vision that he wanted to write some songs because he was musically inclined since a young young little boy and um, about 10 years old during his uh, ordeal uh, he was isolated because he had meningitis <laughs> and they isolated him for 10 days and he asked mom bring me my keyboard i'm going to start doing some music and mom and dad were thinking all we want to do is nurture our son back to good health. But this young boy, he did it. He wrote five songs during his treatment. Yes. And every song was part of how he was going through his treatment. And um, he put five songs together, put out a CD, make a difference. And um, he, um, we had a launch CD party here at the Italian Cultural Center, which actually that was the first annual because that kicked off his foundation. I wrote five songs and I've got a CD out to raise money for cancer research. One person can only do so much, but together we can make a difference. Morning, the morning light. I feel something 
minor, I'm minor fry. I've been through this feeling a few times before. And now I know what to do. I'm gonna lock the door. Lock the door when the going runs. Lock the door when the times are tough. Yeah, he was quite touched and moved because he actually shared a room with a baby that was born with cancer. I mean, that this was the first experience of cancer for, for us, and we didn't even realize what, what it really meant until yeah. Michael got sick. And then seeing a baby being born with it, Michael goes, I can't, I can't believe babies are born with cancer. I need to do something, and he did. Going in and seeing my first, the first baby in there with cancer, Hearing that baby cry in pain because of all the treatment that uh, the baby was going through just it touched me and it made me want to do something about this disease. I knew in the back of my mind all the time, even before I had this disease, that everything was happened for a reason and everything was. And I knew, I just knew in my heart that God wasn't wasn't going to take me up with Him. And I remember one prayer distinctively when I was in bone marrow transplant, and I remember asking him to get me through this as fast and as easy as possible so I could start doing what I had planned to do and making this difference. One person can only do so much, but together we can make a difference. He wrote his songs through two bouts of cancer of his own. He had bone marrow transplant because his cancer returned after six months of chemo, uh, he had about a six month break and a year to the date he went to bone marrow transplant with his own stem cells and that was ravishing. That was so heartbreaking to watch, but boy was he positive all the way through it. Uh, right. They said he wouldn't eat, oh yeah, he said, mom, I don't want a feeding tube, I'll eat, I promise I'll eat. An active nine and a half year old boy, loved my sports, loved school activities, and then a bombshell hit my life. It was. It was a shock. It's like getting the flu like a hundred times over, like just, it's terrible. And there's lots of different feelings with different types of treatment. There were times when, of course, I was scared, but there was also times when, you know, I knew I'd make it. I, I knew I had a positive attitude. I had faith in God and I had the support from my family and friends. I had those three, three things on my side and uh, that's definitely half the battle. One of the really striking things about Michael was uh, his positive approach to life. Everything in life, you can look at it negative or positive. I mean, it's a no brainer. Be positive. He was always looking forward to what he was going to be able to do to contribute to help people. Um, and that was something very unique in a, a teenager when most teenagers I know are more interested in what's going to happen tomorrow and what's going to be at school. He was thinking much bigger than that. Michael, I know that uh, you're going to do something very special with uh, the $1,000 award. What's that? Well, uh, as much as I may need a new pair of jeans, there's people out there that need this money more than me. So this is going towards my fund to raise money for cancer. Boy, you're some kind of guy. We're sure proud of you. Keep up the good work, all right? He was just a very powerful young man with a determination and a positive attitude at all times. Well, that's a testament of the two of you. Mm -hmm. I mean, you obviously raised an exceptional son because to do what he did within his short lifespan, mm -hmm. he's affected locally, provincially, nationally, and globally. Well, here it is, being the Pope um, pretty much marks the most incredible moment in my life. So what I said to the Pope was, continue to bless all the sick children of the world and, you know, and keep them safe. And, and he, he assured me that he would do so and patted me on the face and blessed me. Can you tell us a little bit about what the foundation has been doing? Well, uh, every goal that Michael set, well, he, was, he ran the foundation for the first five years before we lost him. And in those five years, every goal he said he reached, like a CD by the time he was 11 and raised $130,000 with the sale of the CDs. Mm -hmm. And we went to Children's Hospital and they said, what do you want to do with the money, Mike? Because I want to fund young researchers for childhood cancer. We're not going to have them in the future. Well, they all just fell off their chair 
because who is this little man that has this vision? And so he, he went ahead and raised $2.5 million. And he got two lifetime endowments. And we now with that, that has built our critical mass of the program because there's been two scientists every two years. They get to renew a new, new scientists come in and they are so incredible. So now we have the whole Michael Caccioni Childhood Cancer Research Program because we said, why can't we have a whole program for these children? Can we not have, you know, a team of scientists? And we had a $10 million commitment to make. He, he yeah, just about fell flipped. off his chair. $10 million? How the hell are we going to do that? <laughs> How are we going to do $10 million? And I says, you know what? It's important. It'll get done. And yeah. we had a 10-year uh, uh, contract and we did it in five. And so every goal we've set, we've reached and surpassed. You know, I believe Michael's always has a handle on it and always, you know, he works through God through us. And I believe that, uh, you know, it's so important that the, the things that we've had to do and needed to be done. And, and mm. now we have the full out program, which, you know, has actually even led to CAR T cell immunotherapy, which immunotherapy is the way of the future. It's actually, this, that seed was planted over 20 years ago. So it's a very important futuristic measure for all cancers, children and adults. So it's the same treatment for our children as our adults. And this is a, is a way that now everyone can collaborate and work together on the advancement of this horrible disease. Because all of us know yeah. chemotherapy is ravishing and it does a lot of damage. Radiation does a lot of damage. So this is our, our we have this running at the BC Children's Hospital. The CAR T cell immunotherapy is alive and well, and we've saved children's lives that would have not had hope, and they would have been sent home. So uh, Michael would be thumbs yeah, up, yeah, uh, yeah. very happy, very For proud sure. of the 25-year milestone yeah. and what we've accomplished. Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Kirk Schultz, and I am a pediatric hematologist oncologist at the BC Children's Hospital, and I have the privilege uh, to be the director of the Michael Cuccione Childhood Cancer Research Program. Uh, at BC Children's Hospital. Children have cancer and it's a big tragedy. Um, in British Columbia, uh, about a classroom of children are uh, die of cancer every year. And um, we that's too much, that's, that's a tragedy. Uh, the research that we focus on is to try to bring every child uh, a cure uh, from their cancer uh, and that they can go on and live a normal life major voice for us in British Columbia has been the Michael Cuccioni Foundation. Uh, they have been a major fundraiser, a major advocate, and uh, really assisted in furthering how do we come up with new ways to help uh, children who are affected by cancer uh, and uh, to try to get a cure to every single child in British Columbia. Well, the community can certainly uh, support the research. Uh, it, it really is everything that we've uh, seen over the last 30, 40, 50 years of uh, improving the lives for children with cancer has been through research, uh, whether that's research to make the therapies better, to develop new therapies, to make therapies safer, and uh, really supporting that is, is a, a critical uh, factor in, in uh, how we've been able to move things forward to improving survival rates and the quality of life of children over a long period of time. Well, we have three areas that our program has, the Michael Cuccioni program has focused on. One is uh, expanding uh, clinical trials and particularly access to novel uh, agents in what we call developmental therapeutics. And, and we've had a significant expansion of that and the Cuccioni Foundation has supported that. Our second area of focus has been around personalizing uh, cancer treatments, um, understanding the biology of a pediatric cancer, a uh, brain tumor, leukemia, uh, sarcoma, and understanding how we can best personalize and direct targeted uh, drug therapies uh, to get the best outcomes. And the last is our newest program, which has been leveraging off of um, bone marrow transplantation, which is an older immune therapy, which is still highly successful but trying to develop new targeted uh, immune therapies and what we call our cell uh, therapy and transplant program. And this is the one that's really expanded a lot over the last while and we've now gotten access to some of the immune therapies, including CAR T cells. Uh, without the support of the Michael Cuccioni program, we would not have the research capacity and innovation at the BC Children's Hospital that we have today. 
very excited about the future and want to thank the Michael Cattuni Foundation for all of the support they've given us now and will in the future. During his five years of running his foundation, he had chapters in New York, Toronto, and Edmonton. And um, he was so into what he, he was put on earth to do. Um, and that's to Childhood Cancer Childhood Crusader. Cancer, yeah, Crusader. It was amazing. Every town that he went to, uh, he wanted to make sure that the funds raised in New York would stay in New York, vice versa, Toronto. But um, when we lost Michael, we had a decision to make. What are we going to do? Do we crawl under a rock and shut it all down? Or do we continue his legacy? So we sat down with our other two children. At the time, Sophia was 18 and Stephen was just turned 13. And we um, said to them, hey, Michael left us this, but we can't do it without knowing that you kids are going to be okay with this. We can shut this down, but we want to hear what you'd like us to do. It's so my little guy, 13 year old Stephen said, no, Dad, Mom, this is what Michael wants us to do. He started this, and we're going to finish it until we find a cure. To begin, I'd like to thank the most important person in my life. And that person is none other than Jesus Christ. That's his purpose. Maybe that's part of his purpose in life. Um, I think some, some kids are chosen to make a difference and maybe he is one of those. I just want to have fun. Whatever I do, I just want to have fun because life is, is too short. You just gotta, you gotta work at accomplishing as, as much as you can, even in, in, in one day. And, and that helps As if every lot. day was your last day. Exactly, because you never know when something bad might happen. Thank you, sir. That's what I believe we should never do. Never give up on this important cause and make a difference. Let's just go for it. So we've been going at it. This is number 25 years. Sadly to say that um, due to the circumstances of the COVID-19, uh, everything has changed, not just for the Mike Petroni Foundation, but for everyone out there. But we're still trying to find ways to continue reaching out to our supporters and in hopes that they can continue supporting during this time because kids are still dying with this disease and we need their help. Well, you're Cuchonas. Mm. You're not gonna give up. No. So why don't you tell them what you're going to be doing because I think it launches in early July. Yep. I think everybody needs to hear what you're doing, how you're doing it, because this has to go viral and it has to go <laughs> national. So why don't you tell people what you've got already? Yeah, well, uh, we've got quite a board uh, uh, that really works tirelessly and none of them are uh, paid any, any uh, dividends, trust me. But it's all done from the heart. So our board of directors and our team have put together a very incredible uh, event that we're going to do, and it's called the Kick for a Cure Challenge. Um, anyone can kick a ball, and or a golf ball, or get some foil, whatever it is. So we um, we actually have a, a wonderful boy named Casey Wright that actually had ten surgeries. He was born with a brain tumor. A lot of people know who Casey Wright is. He's just a wonderful little man. He's 19 and four feet tall, and, but don't mess with him. He's, 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 he never gives up either. And he's just lovely. So he actually is our, he's being our voice for this. And um, he's kicking it off with, with uh, a speech and then kicks the ball. And then, the, then it gets to another person and that ball go, that person just kicks the ball and says, I'm making a difference for childhood cancer. I'm kicking for the cure. Even my little granddaughter, she had a little kick for a cure t-shirt down by her ankles and her little flip-flops and she kicked the ball. Yeah. And we even had a grizzly bear, believe it or not, uh, at Danny Virtue's uh, ranch. He's a, quite a 
uh, um, he's a famous uh, stunt, stunt man. man, and he had a grizzly. He's got all kinds of things on it on his property. And he had a grizzly bear kick the ball, and uh, for the cures. So we are going to challenge uh, people to get involved, and uh, we can provide the T-shirts and the balls if people don't have them or if they want them, or just do it in the comforts of your home. And you just take your own cell phone and you just do a selfie of this and. And, uh, you know, you could have a, your little guy up the stairs and kick the ball down the stairs and you don't know who's going to be at the bottom. Maybe Michael Buble. <laughs> we're challenging you, Michael. <laughs> um, so, we're, we, yes, we are going to reach out. Uh, we've reached out to the Vancouver Whitecaps um, and they're going to uh, look to get some players involved. So anyone can be involved. Mm -hmm. And, yes, we do want this to be our event that can help us continue to raise the funds because we actually want to go into the CAR T cell immunotherapy for solid tumors and brain tumors next. And that will be another $10 million commitment. <laughs> <laughs> so, but we can do it. <laughs> and we, uh, so we always need help for our children until we get the cure. We're going to, we have to really keep fighting for them. I, I admire your perseverance. I know that you do more than just the foundation. I reached out and asked you to speak at one of my events uh, for my nephew. You couldn't be there, but you not only contributed towards the event, the most important thing you did is you asked for the mother's phone number. Why don't you tell them about the kind of support that you provide just to families? Mm. Yeah, I mean, really, yeah. uh, when people go through this, they want to speak to someone that's gone through it. Yeah. And of course, you know, losing a child you really feel isolated and all alone. You feel like this is just happening to you. And it's, I think it's the hardest sentence in life. Michael beat his cancer not once but twice. But unfortunately, with everything that he went through, his procedures and the surgeries caused his, uh, him to die of respiratory failure in the end. We have empathy, we have love for people that go through this. And we can help them. And we do help them because we listen to them, we know how they're feeling, and we can give them, you know, real honest, you know, feelings and love for them. And, you know, just them being able to talk to us yeah. about what they're going through because they know we have gone well, through this. They, helps. I spend a lot of time going out with fathers that are grieving or devastated because their young one just got diagnosed and the one-on-one -on -one that we are able to give to those parents i think is huge um, they walk away feeling that there is hope and most of the time their kids do make it and but for the ones that we meet that have lost their children, I Thank believe that when they sit down and see how we've gotten through it mm -hmm. and how we didn't crawl under a rock, it inspires them to possibly do the same. And, and some are, they're reaching out and, uh, doing their own little thing to try and help in any way they can. And the other uh, thing too is this puts intense pressure on a marriage and on a family dynamics uh, because, you know, men and women grieve very differently. And so, mm -hmm. you know, it's hard to, to talk about it together sometimes. So we have actually saved people from yep. ending their, their marriage and, and ruining their family even more so. And, and we, we say, you know, be careful because this disease, you know, it, it, you've lost a child and now everybody has had a, is changed forever. So don't let this destroy your family because then it's really one. And no, our loved ones do not want us to get destroyed with this. Yeah. They don't want us to end our marriages. They don't want us to stop, you know, living again. It takes time, yeah. but you can live again and you can laugh again and you can, yeah. you um, can have a new normal, just like this COVID-19. Yeah. It's a new normal when you lose your child. Part of, part of our uh, mission and mandate is that we support, sure, research is the most important to us. 
we try and give all the money to cancer research. Um, but part of our mandate is that we support families. And, you know, as an example, some little boy, or little girl ends up getting cancer. They've been going through their treatments for four or five months just to, you know, all of a sudden send them a little check to for the parents yeah. to take little Susie or Ryan out to, to get him anything he wants or she wants. Uh, we do that, but we did for some adults too. We sent this one couple that were in the brinks, they're done. And we convinced them to take a couple of nights on us and we sent them to Sparkling, Sparkling Hills. Hills yeah. And that one little weekend away without anyone. But we even had a counselor, had a, they have well, counselors yes. there and we even booked the counselor to, we be did. to talk we to We booked them. the counselor, we booked the yeah. massage, everything we could possibly do to change the way their minds were thinking. They're still together today. And today they're still together and that's 10 years ago. So I think that's why it's so important to support the Michael Cuccioni Foundation. There's a research side to it, yep. but there's a very human side to it. And yep. who better to explain to others how that works. Thank you very much, both of you, for the time. Our pleasure. Any final messages you want to give to the audience? Well, you know, uh, like I say, this is a 25 year. We were going to do the gala um, as we've done in annually uh, yeah. at the Italian Center here. And it was going to be, you know, we, we had it planned in our for over a year and we were very excited about it. But I really still would love people to celebrate with us. 25 years has been a lot of our life together and a lot of, you know, ups and downs to make this where it is. So I really would love people to remember this and you know if if you want to give $25 for 25 year challenge there's another challenge to keep helping us but um yeah and be, thank you so much for everyone that's been a part of us yeah. and part of what we've done for 25 years because there's a lot of you out there so oh, thank yeah. you very very much and everyone i mean i'll <clears throat> thank the italian cultural center on saturday night but on tape here i'd like to acknowledge what the Italian Cultural Center has done for our son over the last 25 years, because this was his home ground. And many people say, you would always sell out. You're more than, like you can't fit another person in that hall. Why don't you go somewhere else? What do we always say? No. Michael was in that room for five years, started the foundation here, and we're gonna end yeah. it here. That's fantastic. You know how much Michael means to community. It's not just the Italian community, it's the broader yes. community that he's helped. Yeah. But as the Italian community, we're exceptionally proud of what this young man accomplished. So thank you both of you for everything Our pleasure. you continue to do. And we love Our you, pleasure. Michael. Thank you. Hello, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. I know many of you may not know who I am, so please allow me to introduce myself. My name's Ed Hill, and I am a stand-up comedian here in Vancouver, British Columbia. And I know we're all here today to honor Michael Cuccioni, so I have a little story I can share with all of you that many of you may not know. I was born in Taipei, Taiwan in 1984. And 10 years later, on November 10th, 1994, my family immigrated here to Canada under the understanding that we we're going on vacation. And 36 years later, we're still on vacation. And I remember landing in Canada that day. It was snowing in Vancouver. The next morning, I woke up and I walk around the empty house and I look out into the snowing land and thought to myself, what type of goddamn vacation is this, Dad? And that's what I thought Canada was. A desolate, empty, cold place. And that all changed the very next day. On November 12th, I went to school for the first time in Canada. As I walk through those blue doors in the school, as I look in this classroom full of kids, I was scared. I felt isolated, I felt lonely, until a young man walked up to me. I remember he was wearing a hat, he had a white t-shirt on, a flannel jacket over, 
He had jeans and very nice sneakers. And he walked up to me, reached out his hand, and said, Hi, nice to meet you. I'm Michael Cuccioni. And I shook his hand. And that was the very first time I ever shook anyone's hand. And if you look at the world today, there's a lot of unrest. A lot of injustice going on. And we're trying to figure out how do we treat each other? How do we get along? And that very day, Michael showed me that's all you need to do. It's just a little bit of kindness, a little bit of initiative, and a quick handshake. And he became my first friend here in Canada. These children crying and, and suffering with this disease, if you don't have the heart to reach out and help, then I don't, I don't know, you know, I don't know how anyone could just walk away and just think, oh great, it's over for me.